Bombing London during the early part of the war was a huge navigational challenge for the German Luftwaffe. Using radio beams, the bombers were guided to their target. BBC television shut down. I would imagine that most people in Germany would have thought that being the first um, TV station to transmit high definition television in the world, so yes, it's going to be a target. Everybody decided that um, we're going to shut this place down and it was mothballed basically. So we thought. But BBC engineers at Alexandra Palace were set to work on disrupting these German radio signals. The way the system worked was the German ground station was actually sending a signal to navigate the aircraft on track and the Ali Pali transmitter was able to get into that system and direct the signal back through the aircraft's own transmission back to the ground station and that really screwed up the navigation. And this unpleasant noise was the result. By 1941, a new Weigerard system was incredibly accurate to 500 metres. But by a stroke of luck, the German beams transmitted on the same frequency as Ali Pali. Over at Swains Lane in Highgate, the BBC team had cooked up an ingenious way of listening in on the German air traffic controllers. What they were able to do here was listen to the German navigation signals on a silly old pre-war EMI television which they converted and as soon as they knew that the Germans wished to drop their bombs from one of the aircraft which was coming across towards London um, they would switch on by remote control the television transmitter at Alexandra Palace. It's been suggested that targeting the German radio signals was highly effective and limited the amount of destruction in British cities. 75% of those aircraft never got through and when the signal was jammed they missed the, their, their bombing chance and they had to take their bombs back to base. The Battle of the Beams as it came to be known a lasting war legacy for one of London's greatest landmarks. Kurt Barling, BBC London News.